Hello VC, I'm Dirk. Welcome to the Five Hole. Tonight we're going to talk about Michael's 5,000 subs contest. Big congratulations to Michael at Poetry on Plastic uh, for acquiring 5,000 subs. That's an amazing accomplishment. Um, great job. Um, so Michael came up with a contest uh, with six questions in it. I'm going to go through them really quick and uh, we'll start off with the first one which was uh, to show the uh, first band that you saw live in concert. Um, 1982, I've actually mentioned this in other, um, other videos, 1982, the Peoria Civic Center, um, uh, REO Speedwagon showed up. This is not the album that they were playing at the time. Um, it was the, uh, uh, what was it, Good Trouble Tour. Um, this is much earlier than that. Um, I show these because even in 1982, albums like Riding the Storm Out, and you can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish, um, were some of their biggest hits. Um, here you got Roll with the Changes. Um, Time for Me to Fly, both were huge hits. Um, Riding the Storm Out on the, the title track of Riding the Storm Out. Um, in 1982, they were just starting to get into that horrible 1980s uh, ballad rock that a lot of the uh, harder hitting bands from the 70s sort of slipped into for some reason. And uh, it was sort of a sad state of affairs for quite a few bands. Um, nonetheless, in 1982, uh, they were still busting out all their hits, um, like Riding the Storm Out, um, uh, 157 Riverside Avenue. Uh, it, it, was, it was a great concert. Really, really fun. Um, second question is uh, a record you listened to when you were 17. Um, something that had come out the year before in 1986 and uh, was all over the place at the time at least where I was growing up in Peoria uh, the Beastie Boys licensed ill um, this is their uh, this is the 30th uh, 30th anniversary uh, 30th anniversary of this album um, I don't have an OG copy of it but this one sounds really good so I'm not complaining um, I've been picking up their uh, releases of all their stuff that they've been coming out with over the last few years here and um, they, they sound really good classic album a lot of people consider it uh, sort of frat rock but I tell you what when you're 17 that's exactly the music that you want to be listening to I mean it was brash and in your face and f flipping the bird to all the authority figures it was perfect so I was definitely listening to that uh, okay third question a record that was your entry point into a genre. I'm pretty sure I can say this one pretty confidently. Um, the Orb, UF Orb, uh, was definitely what got me uh, interested in electronic music. Um, you know, it's it's dub, it's house, uh, but uh, I just love the Orb. I mean, they're the way they layer their music. It's so rich. And, uh, and textural it's got good beats uh, throughout them as well as crazy stuff going on in the background um, if you have a really resolving system or if you just put on some uh, headphones and listen closely you, you every time you listen to it you hear more and more stuff um, but yeah this is this is a sweet album so OOBE UF Orb, uh, Blue Room, Towers of Dub, Close Encounters, Majestic, 
and sticky end. Uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool sleeves on the inside. So the orb for the record that got me into the genre of electronic music. Um, a record that's recorded slash mixed horribly that you love anyway. Um, there's probably a ton of records that fall into that category. Um, this one, you can't fault it for being recorded horribly um, other than it was recorded so long ago that recording technology at the time was limited. Um, so this was recorded in 1941. Uh, it's Charlie Christensen. It's a uh, self-titled album, Charlie Christensen. And uh, Charlie Christensen is just a phenomenal uh, jazz guitarist. Uh, he's, he's um, you know, really early uh, electric jazz, electric uh, jazz guitar. And um, this album is ripping. Uh, you know, it's it's jazz a uh, jazz series of the archive of folk music. Um, I don't know that this is a particularly remarkable label, um, but the recording itself in 1941 was done before they had um, tape to record to. So uh, they actually brought a cutting lathe to the um, to the performer and they they cut the album direct to disc. And, um, you know, it kind of sounds that way. It's not, it, it's not the direct to disc, which you can get now, which is, uh, <laughs> some of the best recordings you can get. Uh, but still, even, even sort of the quality of the recording, it's such a great, it's such a great bunch of songs. And he's, he's just an awesome guitarist. Uh, next one is, um, Oh, you know what? I did them in the wrong order. I'm sorry. I got to go back one. Uh, number four was a record that you used to show off your stereo. Um, I pulled out two different ones. The first one that almost always comes to mind is uh, I, Robot by Alan Parsons Project. Um, this album, <laughs> this is a 45. So it's it's got really excellent dynamic range in it. The bass is very present. The um, the clarity of the sound stage is just stunning, and uh, it's he's he uses all kind. Of, I I think it's a hammered dulcimer. You hear him playing uh, or someone playing. It's probably not Alan Parsons playing it, but um, not just in this. In in several of his albums. Um, around the same time this is 1977 originally this this came out i think in 2016 or 2017 uh 2015 um but his production quality is so good and he he worked with pink floyd also and you can hear in some of pink floyd's songs um the the kind of similar soundscapes that are created in the in the production work uh, anyway um that's that's a really great album that does a great job of showing off any sound any stereo system um and then uh a second one that i i picked up more recently uh was the aseo suzuki quartet slash um i'm sorry trio slash quartet um, this is from Three Blind Mice, a Japanese audiophile record label uh, from the 70s that a lot of people compare them uh, to Blue Note being sort of the Japanese answer to Blue Note. Um, so this, uh, this one's pressed by Impex at 45 RPM. Uh, there's, it's possible to buy this in a, a, a trio of albums along with, um, 
now I'm blanking on the names. One of them is um, Misty, and the other one is Sugar, 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 something Sugar. Um, anyway, uh, sort of unique in this, in uh, for the reason that it is um, got two bass players. One of them, Maseo Suzuki, playing bass and cello uh, on some of the uh, some of the songs, and um, and then Takashi Mizuhashi also playing bass. Um, it's kind of cool on their album. They show a diagram of where everyone was in the recording studio, and you can pick them right out of the of the recording when you're listening to it. The sound stage is so crisp and uh, well recorded and well um, well mastered. This was done uh, Kevin Gray mastering at RTI uh, RTI pressing rather. Um, anyway that that was a great album it is a great album um and then the sixth and final question um was what is a future upgrade you want to make to your turntable system etc and i'm sort of on the fence uh either i want to replace the sub platter on my turntable with the groove tracer sub platter um i've got the rega p3 turntable um I'm I'm pretty sure I'm getting rumble uh, in kind of quieter passages and I sort of feel like that might be uh, me hearing the bearing rumbling um, the main bearing of the of the spindle I don't know that for a fact um, sometimes it doesn't bother me other times I'm totally distracted by it so um, that's one I've, I've thought about for a while and I'm likely to do at some point. I don't know if it'll be my next upgrade or not. Uh, the other one would be um, the Rega uh, TT power supply unit, which is an uh, um, alternate power supply unit for the uh, Rega turntable. And it not only gives you a much cleaner power source, but it also gives you the ability to change the speed of the record from 33 to 45 by pushing a button versus taking the platter off and changing the um, position of the belt on the pulley to get a different speed which I don't mind doing but honestly I'm starting to get quite a few 45s in my collection and it's really a it sometimes makes me think twice about putting one on uh, I usually end up doing it anyway but uh, Nonetheless, I go through that whole like process of, oh, should I do it or should I not? And um, it would be so nice to be able to just push a button and be able to uh, listen to 45s whenever I felt like it. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my entry for the contest. And uh, congratulations again, Michael, on 5,000 subs. Great job. And we'll see you all again soon. This is Dirk again from the Five Hole. Have a great night. Bye.